Greetings friends, welcome back, and welcome to an undisclosed location in upstate New York with some awesome scenery, catching things just as the sun goes down. The reason we're here today is to talk about car things, mainly RS3 things, but I also wanted to introduce two more cars to the channel. The first is a car that I got when I was 21 years old. It's a V8 manual six speed and it was my first real sports car at the time. And the second is a car that my father got when he was 22, and he has kept it his entire life. Him and I co-own it now. And that is a V8 manual car as well, and it's in the Ford family, if that gives you any bit of a hint what it is. And uh, my first car that I mentioned, the first sports car was a Pontiac, so. Uh, see if you can figure out what those are and in the meantime, let's talk about the RS3 since it's right here Okay, so first things first the factory warranty just expired. We hit 40 something thousand miles uh, Just the other day and now that the factory warranty is up I think it's time to talk about some small power upgrades I'm not super familiar with everything that's available for these so if anybody has any good info I am all ears. I do know that the IROS group and Hank IROS does killer work, but I really don't know all about the details and the intricacies of it. Um, I think we're looking for something small, maybe like 450 or 500 wheel horsepower. We're gonna do some research, find something cool, and there's a possibility we'll be leaning into some small performance upgrades for the RS3 in the near future. Okay, second thing we have to talk about, I think is super obvious, it's the wheels. I have never been a fan of the stock wheels. They look cool, I guess, as far as factory wheels go, but they just scream stock. So it's time to update those. Those will probably happen, honestly, before the performance upgrades, but we'll see how things fall. I'm looking for a black or a bronze slash gold color wheel. I think that would complement the black super nicely. Traditionally, I go black on black on black. So I have four options right now that I'm considering. And I'll put those, let's see, let's see if I can do this. I'll see if I can put the four wheels here, 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 and here. And you guys can let me know in the comments if you would be so kind, which ones you like best or which ones you think might look best on this car. Yeah, any input you guys have on that, let me know. So we're talking wheels, we're talking some small performance upgrades, and that's the fun stuff to come for the RS3 in the near future. Okay, here she is, a 1969 Mustang Mach 1 Super Cobra Jet R-Code Mustang. This has a factory four-speed manual transmission and a 428 from Ford. And it has the Cobra Jet heads on it and all the good stuff like that. Currently, actually, we're running a 390 that has had some work to it. We have that in there because we are getting the original block touched up in a few ways. So, Dad got this car when he was 22 years old, and I think that was in 1980. So I think this car was like 11 or 12 years old when he got it, and he has virtually daily driven this ever since. It's the original paint. It was called Indian Fire, or I guess I should say is called Indian Fire Red, I think. And let me just move this bottle here. Can I close this? Is there anything in the way? Yeah, okay. We have the original stripes on the car, which are really cool and could potentially be all of the original wheels. I'm not sure if it's all the original wheels or if it's even the original wheels or not. I'd have to look into that actually. This car has been so familiar my entire life. When I was a little toddler and kid, this car was up on jack stands, kind of like it is now, uh, in a different garage where we lived and it was completely rotted out. Floorboards were see-through, fenders were virtually gone. And when I was like five, maybe six, uh, my dad and his friends and me, of course, did a full restoration on this, uh, at least a home restoration in the garage. They redid fender skins and patched frame rails and stuff like that. It is ready for an update. 
there's a decent amount of rust coming back. You can see, well, it's actually not too bad in the doors really, but um, it's visible, you know, it needs some work. That's not all the way through, it's just through the paint, but you can really see it in parts of the frame and then the trunk lid and stuff really is in rough shape. You can see this has been redone once already and was never fully finished. We have a decent amount of parts for this already. We have full quarter panels, a full trunk lid. Um, we got a few interior parts. Obviously not all of it is original. These are not the original seats that were in it. From what I hear, dad sold the original buckets at one point and uh, we will be getting authentic replacements. And it's really in amazing shape for being driven multiple months out of the year. We are in upstate New York, so it can be driven all year round. But uh, yeah, this has been a survivor, a driver and a survivor. And everyone knows this car. And dad gets offers on this every time he takes it out. There's the Cobra Jet intake and the hood pins. This was the real deal in 1969 when this came out which by the way this is the original plate that dad had when he was 22 on the car which is pretty cool so the reason we are here today is to give this car a little bit of love dad is away for the weekend on a fishing trip and i'm here with norwich detailing and we are giving the interior some TLC, some love and some attention, vacuum wipe down, nothing super invasive, um, just to start for now, but it'll be a nice little surprise for when dad gets home. They have it up on stands right now because they were doing drivetrain work. Uh, first we needed some clutch work and then after the clutch we needed some rear end work, but everything is sound now and we're just about ready to go. Need some fun parts like some wheels. I think wheels, everybody that has a car wants wheels, right? These look pretty good, but new ones would be gooder, right? <laughs> also, I do realize that I'm talking about potentially putting wheels on a car that has a rusty frame, but you know, it is what it is, isn't that? It is what it is. All right, it is starting to get a little bit dark out, but we are headed up to my house, actually, <clears throat> and my house has been under construction and renovations for the better part of two years but uh, it's coming along nicely it looks awesome and yeah all right here we go early shift sound good here we are home sweet home not looking the best with the dumpster out front but it is a work in progress just through that door there it's a Pontiac and yeah let's go check that out okay here we are um, I'll probably have to do an update video on this place soon but for now, let's just head on into the garage. You can see under a piece of plastic here, there it is. Let's get a better view over here. So I should really pull that plastic off. Oh man, she needs so much TLC. That's painful. Okay, let's get this off. Ooh, she's dusty. Okay, what we have here is a 2000 Pontiac Trans Am WS6. This has the VA LS1 and a manual six speed with it. And it is, actually it's, it looks a little bit more modified than it is, it's mostly cosmetic. All right, so first things first, if anyone here knows Pontiac, they know that those headlights are not stock. We did swap the headlights out for fixed headlights. The purists can't stand that, which I get it. It's it's not, you know, it changes the character of the car. But I daily drove this for a while, and the pop-up headlights were just super obnoxious. So we swapped those out, put a different hood on it. That's the WSQ hood, and I put a lip down here. And we do have some nice wheels. They are super, super dirty, 
but we have some clutch racing wheels. They are finished in bronze. They're 19 by 10 all the way around, which is a little bit small for this car. But I wanted a wheel that I uh, I wanted a wheel setup that I could run four square on and have a working spare. So did the interior a little bit different. We've got a wooden Grant black walnut steering wheel here, which does have a quick release attachment on it, which is kind of cool to the white gauges, pedals, some interior modifications. Uh, had this piece sent out, special fitted, so we could get a double din in there, which looks super updated. Wow, Ugh. it's so dusty here. I don't know if you can hear it, Whew. but I am ooh, struggling here a little bit. Okay, we did Corbo racing seats, harness seats, which actually shine up really nicely. We have a four, 5.5 point in the driver's seat, a three point in the passenger seat, which is a lot more convenient. We've got the strut bars, the harness bar, and then we've got our working and matching fifth wheel spare in the back. That's just kind of mocked up right there for now. I have to have a special mount built so that we can have that in there full time. It is a T-top car. I'm not going to take the T-tops out right now because everything is filthy. And I did do the headliner, which is kind of cool, in this black on black paisley. All right, what else about uh, the inside of this car? I do have a heads up display. It's right there and it shines onto the windshield. It has your oil temp, your water temp, your battery, your speed, tack, anything you want. Okay, let's talk about the outside of the car. And uh, we touched on the wheels and the hood and stuff a little bit. The color is not the original color. The color is originally a navy blue metallic and this is actually a wrap. It's one of those sprayable wraps and it peels right off, but we went with a matte white, which has been trashed at this point because of all the work we're having done. Um, but anyway, yeah, that peels right off. You can probably see the original, oh, it's locked. The original color is visible in some of the door jams and stuff, but it looks like, uh, my keys are in the house somewhere. But yeah, we are going to have to spend a day cleaning this up, probably stripping the wrap off from it, revealing the dark navy blue, which actually has highlights of purple and metal flake through it. It's super, super awesome. But yeah, we'll have to strip this thing down, clean it up, and honestly, the interior shines up so nice on this thing. Runs and drives. It has approximately 55,000 miles on the factory LS1 that's in it. There's a little bit better view of the interior. And the wheels, boy, they need some work. The front wheels have a great set of Willwood brakes in there. Those are six piston Willwood brakes. Oh, my camera's freaking out. Whew. Okay, those are six piston Willwood brakes. They are awesome. They've got ceramic pads, drilled and slotted rotors, huge, huge upgrade. I definitely recommend adding brakes to your F body if you are thinking about it or any car really brakes are so underrated all right so those are the two cars i wanted to introduce to you today we've got the 2000 trans am the 1969 mustang mach 1 and of course we have the rs3 so fun content coming up let me know which vehicle you guys prefer do you like the old school muscle car content do you like this sort of uh, millennial generation sports car slash technically this could be considered muscle car at this point. This thing is 24 years old now. So whew, I struggled too hard with that math, first of all. And second of all, seriously, this thing is, it's kind of a classic car at this point. So do you like the old stuff, the slightly less old stuff, or do you like the new stuff like the RS3? Let me know. And in any case, we'll be showing a decent amount of all three coming up and potentially a new addition to the garage at some point coming up soon. So I hope all is well. Thanks for the support and enthusiasm, friends, and I'll catch you in the next one.